Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here and I'm having a bad internet day. I'm having a bad internet day today, which has actually been already very disruptive to my business. Despite my uh, lovely failover internet setup, the cellular is uh, a little bit tricky to work with when there's a bunch of people at home uh, drawing bandwidth off it. And I'm having this bad internet day because there is a nationwide internet uh, problem today in Israel. The partner internet service provider, ISP, is having its problem and why is partner having a problem partner is having a problem because of a internet cable it's the med nautilus internet cable which links between israel and some other places in the mediterranean it actually goes over to italy now most people have never heard of this really fascinating world of the submarine internet cables um, and there's a fantastic website the one i'm currently on now it's called submarinecablemap.com i will put a link to the description but I'm also gonna go low tech here and just type it out for you. It's submarinecablemap.com. It's a fantastic resource, uh, free and regularly updated resource by Telegeography. And on this webpage, you can literally see the cables. Now, what are the cables? Well, did you ever ask yourself, when you connect to the internet in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem or Eilat, how do you actually get data from a server in Los Angeles, right? How does that work exactly? And the answer is that the internet backbone which is the main part of the internet is actually connected mostly through oceanic cables they're literally cables running at the bottom of the ocean bed laid by special ships it's pretty freaking amazing for those interested in going down this rabbit hole further there is an amazing youtube video um you'll actually see what these cables look like and they interview the guy who manages one of these landing points and these are these are what are called landing points where the cables hit onto land and you can see they're on the periphery of these continents. So they interview some, one of these guys, I think he's in Denmark, <clears throat> and these cable landing sites are naturally very, very sensitive, right? I mean, if you think about the potential for espionage or anything like that, if you were determined to do that on a big scale, well, you'd probably wanna tap the top of the system, right? So these landing sites are actually super sensitive, even though they just, in reality, look like a little house on the beach with some protection and they interview the guy in Denmark and he holds up with his hands the internet cable supplying Denmark and it's literally like an ethernet cable it's absolutely incredible um, the, the amount of data that can actually be carried in a small fiber optic core is pretty mind-blowing so yeah go down that rabbit hole on YouTube you have my encouragement but let's look at Israel's uh, links uh, just to show you how the internet works in Israel so here is Israel, it's a small country, and you can click on one of these cables and you can actually see. So this is the reason if you are not having internet today like me because of partner, the problem's here. It's the Med Nautilus uh, submarine cable system in green and it lands in Haifa and it also lands in Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv, I know it's on Gordon Beach, I have no idea where it lands on Haifa. Uh, so these are the cables we have currently. You can see there's the uh, Med Nautilus submarine system. Now, until fairly recently, this was the only game in town. They had a monopoly. And if we trace the path of Med Nautilus, and it's the green line on the right here, if I'm not mistaken, we should see it meandering its way up to Italy. Or if you follow one of these links, right, you can see this um, gray line here originating from Italy goes down. It's a bit hard to keep track of these. But this is Jonah, and we can literally attempt to trace it. Let's try to do that again. Med Nautilius, Med Nautilius, Med Nautilius. Yeah, Med Nautilius then bifurcates and lands in Greece. And then there's another chain of Med Nautilius that feeds up in Bulgaria into something called the Kafos cable. So anyway, if you want all the details, you can find them out here. Um, there's actually, so Med Nautilius used to be the only one. It's operated by a Irish company, uh, but they have Italian headquarters or something like this. Then Bezek built their own cable called uh, Tamaris North. And this, as you can see, connects up to Cyprus. And then from Cyprus, it feeds in. So this is like a worldwide, this is now, it's not exactly true that if you uh, connect to a website in, let's say you watch a YouTube video that it's coming all the way from a server in wherever YouTube hosts data, let's say, um, Let's just say Los Angeles. How the internet works nowadays is a little more sophisticated. 
um, something like YouTube or assets that a lot of people are watching, well, it doesn't make sense that every single time there should be data going back and forth from Israel to the world. So major data providers will cache uh, commonly viewed assets in uh, edge locations. So there might be like a YouTube server physically in Israel and that if you're watching or streaming a popular YouTube video or a Netflix show, it's actually coming locally. But ultimately at some point, that data might be propagated to that server from the US. And how does it get from the US to Israel? Well, at the speed of light, it literally travels along the ocean bed on one of these cables, maybe makes a switch here, a switch here, a switch here, a switch here, until we eventually get here. And that's why when the Mednotilius cable breaks down, if you're sitting in uh, Elat, right? Well, there's two ways you might lose internet. One might be that a uh, digger outside your front door uh, rips through the internet cabling, right? That 500 meters from your door. Or if you're living in Jerusalem, it could be the case that there was a ocean vessel here off the coast of Crete that literally sliced through the cabling a thousand miles away. So it's, it's actually fascinating how interconnected the internet is. Uh, now just to finish off, uh, so we, we looked at the Tamaris and the uh, Mednotilia systems and then in Tel Aviv we have a few different branches actually. There is Lev submarine system, another Mednotilius, Jonah and uh, Blue and then in Elat we have a couple more, I can't zoom in any further. In Taba there's a landing point and in uh, Raman there is a landing point and uh, you can get some details about it. You can see it's got its ID who it's owned by, in this case, it's a consortium of companies. That can't be the one because it's not listing a landing point. But if we go on to the Mednotilius uh, system, this website's a little bit finicky, Mednotilius here. And we can see it's a 7,000 kilometer cable operated by Telecom Italia. And uh, besides Haifa, it also lands in Istanbul, Catania, Italy, and as we hover, it's showing the landing points, Tel Aviv, Haifa, Chania in Greece, Athens in Greece, Penn, Taskinos in Cyprus. And uh, you can find out about the cable by going onto the cables website and they will give you even more info about that particular cable. Final thing to point out here is that there is another cable coming. Google has announced plans for an undersea cable connecting Israel, Southern Europe and it's going to be tying Israel. So this is actually a kind of crazy dynamic that we've been seeing in recent years. Traditionally, there were only a few cables operated by major, major telecom consortia. And in recent years, we're seeing big tech like Google and Amazon AWS actually laying their own trans transoceanic cables, which when you think about it, is pretty extraordinary. So this is an example of the development like this. It's gonna be called the Blue Submarine Cable System and it's going to connect Israel Italy, France, and Greece. Uh, the other is the Raman submarine cable system will connect Jordan. I think we saw that on the map just there. And uh, according to the last report I read about this, this is expected to become operational in 2024. And the more cables that are laid, here we go, yeah, the company expects cables for use in 2024. The more cables that are laid and the newer cables can carry more data. So the more bandwidth becomes available to domestic internet consumers, it all flows down. So when you're looking at your internet options in Israel, people tend to look at their local ISP and uh, there's a whole bigger picture going on in the background and that's the submarine cable system that actually forms the internet backbone and basically what connectivity is available to, in, to Israel at the level of the international switches here uh, to the international internet system. That's kind of the uh, choke point for what domestic ISPs can offer. So I hope this, di this deep dive into the very random but I think fascinating subject of submarine cables was interesting. And if you wanna get more videos from me about this and lots of other very random tech topics, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Have a great day.